Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So you know when the YouTube algorithm keeps pushing a video to you, it's like, hey Graham, you gotta watch this, and you don't click on it, and it's like, hey Graham, no, you gotta watch this, and you still don't watch it. And then it's like, Graham, no, seriously, we're not gonna stop showing it to you until you click on the video. And uh, this is me clicking on the video. It looks actually really interesting. It's titled, How I Turned Vending Machines into a $300,000 Business. Who doesn't wanna do that? So let's watch the video right after, of course, you subscribe, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and now with that said, let's begin. People love vending machines because they're convenient. If you're thirsty, you get a Coke. If you're hungry, you get some Doritos. Not many people know that anybody can own them. Yeah, you know what? I gotta say, I, you know, I haven't used a vending machine in forever, but uh, when I was in like middle school and high school, the vending machines were, were it. I mean, like if you had an extra dollar, you could buy whatever you wanted, and it, this was treated like gold. I'm curious actually how much those machines made, but I think this is a fantastic business for some people to get into. As long as you could make your money back in like a year, this could be actually a really profitable side hustle. There's a potential for high return. My name is Marcus Graham. Wait a second, did he say Marcus Graham? My name is Marcus Graham. Oh, it's spelled G-R-A-M. <laughs> Never mind, that's kind of cool though. And I made over $300,000 last year for my vending machine business. Yeah, Marcus, but how much of that is profit? That's what I don't like with a lot of these. Like, yeah, I made 30 bajillion dollars last year, but uh, hey, uh, profit was 50 grand. I, I wanna know how much was profit. My guess is, uh, I don't know, 80 grand, 90 grand, which is basically a full-time salary, which is really good, but uh, not 300,000, let's see though, maybe I'm wrong. I have 21 vending machines spread across Baltimore, Philadelphia, DC, and Detroit. How does he have that many vending, how, how do you service them all? You gotta have other people working for you at this point. This snack machine makes $800 a month, and this drink machine makes $1,000 a month. This machine makes $1,000 a month, and this machine makes $1,300 a month. Oh my gosh. These are like rental properties. Like instead of owning a rental property, you buy a vending machine, it makes it the same amount of money without dealing with tenants. Now, of course, there are gonna be repairs. You have to go and stock up the machines probably every week or two. But if that's net profit, which I have a feeling it is, wow. It's not bad. Now, I'm also curious though if he has to split it with the university. Most likely, yes. They're not doing this for free. In 2018, it made $4,000. 2019, it made $25,000. 2020, it made over $200,000. 2021, it made over $300,000. And I'm currently projected to make over $500,000 in 2022. Yeah, again, that's gross sales. So he's got to take out the cost of the product, the cost of his labor, the cost of maintenance. All of these things add up. Uh, but still, the net number is probably pretty high for the initial investment you put in. I stayed with my mother for about nine months and was able to save up $10,000. From that point in time, I wanted to move to Philadelphia to start a business. I didn't know what that business was gonna be, and I landed on the vending machine business. What a hustler, that is awesome. I think a lot more people should take advantage of living at home if, if they can, if they have the opportunity, if they have the means to be able to do so, and just save. Don't use it as a time to like, relax and you know play video games and take it easy like that's your time where you could get ahead uh, so many people i feel like have this opportunity and they, they either waste it or they just don't even use it i think it's so underrated move back with your parents if you can save 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 and then redeploy the money back into something else a few tips that i have for starting your own vending machine business is one never buy a machine until you have a place to put it when i'm looking for a good vending location I'm looking for places that have a lot of foot traffic. You know, places like um, apartments, hotels, motels, um, you know, student housing. Yeah, but I'm curious how much he pays for those locations because there's no way that they would say, oh yeah, just put it here and we'll just, it's free. My guess is that they get a percentage of profits. It's probably 20%, 25%, but they gotta get enough for that location. A vending machine could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000, depending on if it's new or refurbished. This is a Vendo 511 drink machine, also known as your classic Pepsi machine. A refurbished machine like this will cost you around $1,500. It's not bad, you may as well just get refurbished. Unless they come under warranty, they're fixed for the first like five years. Looks good. I like actually seeing the physical product though. I don't know what it is. I like being able to point at the bag and be like, I'm gonna get that one. If you were to get a refurbished machine, it would cost around 3,500. And if you were to get a new machine, it would cost you roughly $7,000. Ah, that one looks like a spaceship. That's the futuristic one, I want that one. 
Yeah, just like everything else. If inflation is going up at like 15, 20% since then, these machines are costing more. Plus, I bet a lot more people are becoming entrepreneurial right now, and so the demand for these machines and like side hustles, probably skyrocketing. Before the pandemic, this machine was $1,400, and now it's $2,000. Yeah, there you go. There's your purchasing power, <laughs> gone. I then shop for product for the machines that I service, and then I go stock the machines. See, but it's labor intensive. You have to constantly check on these machines, make sure they're working, attend to anything that breaks. It's not a passive thing. I think a lot of people have the idea that they could go and like check once a month for these machines, cash out like $1,000 a month. I bet he's putting in a lot of work into these. Red Bull, peanut M&Ms, nacho cheese Doritos, um, Lipton iced tea. Those are some of the things that people love the most in my machines. I'm curious how difficult it is not to consume his own product. Like if he's buying a whole bunch of Cheez-Its, how easy would it be to just be like, take a bag for yourself and just like snack on the way? I pay 60 cents for a bag of Doritos at a wholesale price and I resell it for $1.50. So I'm profiting about 90 cents per bag of Doritos that I sell. Now, okay, so we get a bit of the profit margin. So we gotta say that he's at least marking up by double. Okay, so if it's 300,000 gross, we could assume that half of that is going to be his net profit, 150 grand, uh, which minus, of course, his time and how much he pays to these locations. Let's just say he pays the locations 20%. That means he's making $120,000 a year. Then let's just assume that out of that, maybe $15,000 a year goes to random repairs, $105,000. Uh, then minus his time or employees. Uh, so my guess, he's probably pulling in about $90,000 a year net in his pocket for running this, which again is actually rather fantastic. 30% of my revenue goes towards buying product for the vending machines. 10% goes towards paying my staff. Another 10% goes towards miscellaneous things like gas. And the other 50%, I profit. All right, there we go. So we're pretty close. It's just, uh, you know, vending machine maintenance. But you know what? If 10% uh, is going to wages and that's included in maintenance, I could absolutely see how he's making 120, 150 a year. I can work when I want to work. I also like the ability to service people, to provide a need to them. Hardest part though is going on vacation. Like, uh, you need to trust somebody so much to be able to, uh, you know, take a month off or take a few weeks off. If anything breaks, have someone else on call. Most likely it'll have to be multiple people in case one person's unavailable, because no one's gonna run it like he does. In the future, I'm looking to expand to multiple states, add more vending machine locations around the nation. I wanna add more staff to the team and then potentially open up my own vending machine warehouse where I will sell my own vending machines, car readers, and vending machine product. Now this guy's got it all wrong. It, he just needs to sell a course online, how to make $1,000 a month from vending machines part-time. If you create a course on that, people will pay $100 for access to that. Maybe even charge them $200. And then also include like, you know, a group or like a mentorship program where you could answer their questions, where you go in there, they, they could talk to you, uh, you know, on Zoom or whatever, once a month or something like that. You could make so much more money than doing anything else. I think if he just did that, oh, that's, all, that's all you need to do. He's already done the business. Now teach other people how to do it as well. I've been able to employ my sister, which is something very, very important to me. And she's been able to turn her life around. She's running my business in Philadelphia while I live in the suburbs in a very nice house with my family. Yeah, but here's the thing though. Uh, it's very difficult to hire non-family or non like really close friends because uh, my understanding with businesses like this is the amount of theft that happens. I'm not saying that like, you know, everyone steals, but there is gonna be a high percentage of people who when they're dealing with cash, it's like just take out an extra 20. If you don't have the credit card reader, there, there's no way to verify that as far as I'm aware. Like data that gets sent to him to know how much each transaction is to verify that that's how much cash is in the machine. Uh, a lot of it's still old school equipment. So a lot of it, as far as my understanding, is just trust. So finding people that you could trust is probably the biggest hurdle when scaling a business like this. I want to change other people's life by talking about the business, um, doing speaking events, seminars, webinars, whatever I can do to you know, help everyone learn about a business that not a lot of people know about. Overall, it's honestly a really fantastic video. I really hope CNBC continues making videos like this because uh, it's really eye-opening into the inside world of just 
what it's like, uh, as they say, on the job. I think it's a fantastic business. I think for a lot of people looking to do something on the side, uh, especially if they have the time, this could be interesting. So honestly, I like it, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video too. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.